All right, guys, I'm narrating because my microphone was off on my camera. So here I've got a uh, piece of stainless stock with a hole drilled 11 30 seconds through it. Uh, I started to tap it 1 8 MPT, but that wasn't working in the vise. It kept turning. Um, there's a 304L angle iron, uh, angle steel uh, piece there. Um, and you'll see on the right there is a flexible um, coolant hose. Um, there's a valve in the middle there. There's a nozzle, and at the end is a 1 8 MPT fitting that threads into the stainless piece that I was trying to drill and tap. Um, again, I was trying to uh, to drill and tap this uh, stainless guy, but then uh, it was just rotating in my vise. I couldn't tap it because stainless is pretty hard. But it turns out to probably be for the best that that happened because uh, I should probably weld that to the angle iron bracket um, before uh, tapping it. So that way, uh, when I tap it, it doesn't get warped uh, from welding after the fact. So uh, anyway, those two uh, those two screws are, are relevant to the whole thing. They were just sitting there. Um, so yep, that's the uh, angle bracket. Um, I bought that for another project, and I had it left over. So I'm going to weld the stainless piece just like that um, right on the center there. And uh, that will stand it off the drill press. Um, it will be tapped 1 8 MPT on front and back. Um, so that the nozzle, uh, the hose can attach from the front and the feed from the pump can attach from the back. And you can see there, that's how I'm going to thread it in. And then uh, that, that's kind of the assembly. All right, so here I've gone ahead and uh, I've welded the uh, stainless tube that I, well, the, the solid stock that I drilled out with an 11 30 seconds drill bit. I've welded that to the uh, angle piece by uh, holding it in my palm grand vise here. You can see there's a little V groove there that holds the, uh, the round portion very nicely um, and then the uh, angle up against it and uh, pretty nice uh, TIG welds there um, this is a uh, 304L so I, I, I like how well that welds I, I weld it quite often um, the nice part is you don't have to paint it or powder coat it or anything like that um, it should just kind of hang out and look like this um, you could I might paint it uh, or uh, sorry powder coat it gray to match the uh, the drill press but for right now I'm, I'm okay with this so messing with the exposure there. Um, yeah, so not much to talk about. Um, I, I am glad that I ended up welding it first and then tapping it because, uh, you know, welding it, especially since I'm welding just the one side, um, one side meaning one side of the 360 degrees of the part, um, you can warp it. Stainless especially likes to, uh, to pull in the direction of, uh, that the weld is on. So, you know, not not a big deal. This is not a crucial uh, seal. I'm not running like oil or f fuel for this. This is just a coolant line, low pressure. But uh, you know, it's always good to uh, to do the uh, the, the project uh, as you would anything else. So anyway, uh, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start tapping and assembling and and so forth. And again, this is for the uh, the drill press. Uh, I'm going to put a drill, uh, where I'm pointing there is where I'm going to put the uh, screw hole that will attach to the portion of the drill press that um, holds the cable bracket. So it should fit off just like that on the side of the drill press. And uh, you'll have an inlet on the front and an outlet, or sorry, inlet in the, uh, in the back and an outlet in the front uh, with the flexible hose coming off. All right, so uh, I've gone and um, like I said, welded this guy up real nice. Um, but now that it's attached to this uh, angle adapter or angle piece, I was able to uh, tap it uh, 1 8 MPT on both sides. So, I'm going to go ahead and mount this up to the drill press and uh, show you. Actually, I'm going to put the uh, fittings in it first, but then I'll mount up the drill press and see. Uh, take a picture and show you guys through video what, uh, what that's going to look like. Alright, so uh, real quick. Just as a summary, kind of, I've got the uh, the bracket I've made with the uh, MPT fitting on it. Um, I thread in this aluminum hose fitting with uh, Teflon paste and uh, the bendy. What do they call it? They're calling it lock line. Uh, one eighth MPT plastic fitting again with some paste. But uh, really, this is a low pressure thing, and 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 it's going to flow out of a, a quarter inch uh, hole at the end. But if you were to turn it off, it'd be really annoying if you turned it off and it uh, 
it leaked at the seams here. So those are good uh, for sure. And I'm gonna go put this on the drill press now. All right, guys, and uh, pretty much set here. Um, I used an existing bolt hole that holds the wiring uh, to the to the body of the drill press, and uh, I had to get a longer bolt, but that's no big deal. I have a bunch of that in stock. Um, here's my uh, inlet fitting. So I'll have a pump, my pump that'll uh, be on the base, pump right up into here, and here's the outlet. And then, uh, then as you can see here, um, I've got my light still intact. This guy stays out of the way of the light. No water or coolant's gonna go over the wiring for the light at all. Um, light still works. Um, and then I got my, uh, my guy here. And it's cool because uh, I have enough that I can really get around. I can, you know, I could do the tool. I could cool the tool itself. Um, the nice part is that I don't have it set up to follow the head. Um, because that can be annoying depending on, especially on a drill press, if your drill bit's real long, if I had fastened it to the head, the quill rather, um, I might not have enough hose to uh, reliably follow the tool. So um, having it on the base, the quill will travel um, separate of the uh, coolant. So you, you know you would focus this on the uh, on the hole you're drilling, and then uh, you know drill away. And uh, the only the only issue you'll have is you'll have to adjust this based on the table height. So I'm okay with that. Works real good. I put the uh, the knob here to turn the coolant on and off. I might move it up top, but I kind of like it having it down here for right now. Um, there's a, a fitting back here. It's a one half MPT. Uh, to barb. So uh, I'm going to put a bucket underneath with a drain. I'm going to have to make a plug for the, uh, the center post because you see if, uh, if I just rely on that one drain hole, it'll work. But the problem is, bear with me for a second. The problem is, this guy has a through hole. I don't know if you can see that, but this hole is through. And the uh, the table's through. Right there. So what I'm thinking about doing is simply making a plug for this uh, for this table. And uh, plugging that up so that you can get some chips in there, but uh, the coolant will backflow out onto the table and not flood or not drip out the bottom of the, uh, the table. So I'm gonna make a plug, you know, just a tap in plug. I could even put a, uh, a Y underneath the table so that the two drains hook together. In fact, I might do that. Um, and that'll be, that'll be nice because then it'll, it'll, uh, it, they'll both drain and it won't rely on the one hole. Because basically, I have to fill this hole up with coolant until it floods out of here and drips down these four ways and makes its way back to this drain. So if I put a drain at the bottom of this hole, um, then I can simply uh, drain that hole and the table. The only thing that will suck is that uh, I'm gonna have to stuff some steel wool in there and clean it out periodically because uh, chips go down there. So uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, so uh, pretty good. I'll be running it probably in a few days. I gotta order some hose and a couple fittings uh, and make that, that plug. I might make it out of ABS plastic, turn that on the lathe, and thread it like uh, half MPT, and uh, put the drain on the bottom of that. So uh, anyway, looking good, and that's my project so far.